Next question is in the name of Assemblymember Berry and relates to the use of borough-wide Section 60. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's important to place this issue in context. We have seen since 2014 an increase in violent crime across England and Wales, including London, and this includes teenagers uh, dying on streets from gun and knife violence. My knife crime strategy is delivering a public health approach to reducing violence. This includes backing the police in conducting additional enforcement activity and targeted intelligence-led stop and search. The use of Section 60 orders is an important tool to be deployed in strictly limited circumstances, where a senior officer reasonably believes that incidents involving serious violence may take place in any locality in the police area, and to prevent serious violence and enable the recovery of offensive weapons. Authorization is required from a commander or above, and a superintendent then manages it on an hourly basis. This is a high level of authorization. We've had the biggest rollout of body-worn videos of any city in the world since I became mayor. Body-worn videos are worn for accountability and transparency, as well as to give the police more confidence. The use of Section 60 powers, their application, whether borough-wide or otherwise, is an operational decision for our police service. These powers enable police officers to conduct stop and search in a defined geographical area, which might be borough-wide if there's an immediate concern of serious violence or the widespread carrying of weapons. This is often used immediately after a violent incident to prevent more violence occurring. During the course of 2017 and 18, uh, 106 Section 60 authorisations were issued. We've seen this increase significantly recently, with 95 issued across London from January to April this year. My Deputy Mayor and I now receive regular updates on the use of Section 60, including where they're implemented across whole boroughs as part of our fortnightly discussions on knife crime and violence with the Commissioner. I'll be seeing her later on today as well. Of the 95 authorisations issued between January and April this year, 46 covered whole borough areas. Section 60 stop and searches accounted for 2.5% of stop and searches in the same period. This wider increase in the use of Section 60 comes at a time when the Commission and I have been clear that Londoners can expect to see an increase in the use of targeted intelligence-led stop and search. And this includes the use of body-worn cameras by officers during stop and search. We know that these can reduce complaints. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've been um, trying to find out more about this issue. Um, unfortunately, I have two written questions that I submitted to the May Mayor's Question Time to try and get some data on the use of uh, borough-wide stop and search orders going back in time um, haven't been answered yet, and I wondered if you might be able to speed that up a bit. I mean, I've, I've actually, thank you for telling us there have been 46 borough-wide uh, stop and search, section 60 orders so far this year. I've been trying to track those by looking at the Twitter feeds of the, the police, um, and I don't think I've captured all of those that way. So, Chair, why don't I agree to, I know it was raised in the last Police and Crime Committee, I'm looking towards the Chair now, but why don't we agree for me to arrange for the Deputy Mayor and the relevant officer to come to the Police and Crime Committee. Other members can go along to that committee and, and there can be a proper explanation of this issue, because it's really important mm. that some members have confidence in what the police are doing. The police want you to have confidence sure in what they're doing. I'm sure we would welcome that, Mr we, Mayor. Can, can we, that, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously I don't have much time here today, and in Police and Crime already, other Assembly members who cover constituencies are concerned that um, potentially the, the, the borough wideness of this doesn't mean that it's necessarily targeted and intelligence-led. We worry that it's being used as a, a reassurance tool rather than for tactical reasons and we want a very close eye kept on this. Can you reassure us that you're keeping a very close eye on this? Well, first of all, can I say I understand the articulation of your concerns. I think they're reasonable concerns to be articulated. Can I reassure you um, that those are concerns that others have as well and it's mm -hmm. important that I am reassured the police are doing what they can. I've seen myself the use of Section 60 uh, post an incident. Uh, can I give you a, a re-example? So uh, stabbing occurs, we're worried about reprisals. Uh, the police know tensions are high, and we know it's limited to a, a geographical area. So in those circumstances, the senior officer on the ground will ask for authorisation, uh, and, and he or she knows the area better, and that's led to uh, a de-escalation. Uh, what the police are also keen to do is make sure there are civilians present during the whole profile stop and searches, where the violent crime task force is out and yeah. stuff. So uh, the deputy mayor and I are making sure we have more checks and balances, and that's why I'm keen for you and the police and crime committee to see some of the things we're doing. And I'm open to ideas, by the way, Chair, about more scrutiny. The other good news is the stop and search monitoring groups are having more scrutiny as well, but it's important we get this, this, yeah, this really sure important tool. Um, just on the, finally on the issue of communication, um, I'm, a, I'm a ward councillor um, and we had a borough-wide section 60 across 
Camden, where I, I wasn't informed about this until several days later, and it had gone on for a couple of days. Um, that's just to give us an example. I think we are seeing um, maybe not the communication there should be. Like I say, I haven't found all 46 on Twitter, and I think that's an important Which way for nice police to let people know. Because I think if we're going to have people covered by these quite draconian powers, it's important that the communication is good. I, so hopefully you can do something well, to no, improve no, the just communication be quite as well. I, I don't think it's reasonable to expect the police on operational mass to let 2,000 councillors, 73 MPs, 32 council leaders, 25 assembly members, the mayor, deputy mayor and others to know every time there's a section 60. No, 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 I'm just, just that when it is covering a ward, then the ward is, it, the, this is the, the expansion of it. But we can... But Chair, I mean, just, I, I swear this, this is really important for public. Often these are taking place at 3 a.m. in the yes, morning. Yes, that, that will do. I, I, I just, I, I, I think we're going to be reasonable about operational decisions taken by senior mm -hmm. officers. Uh, and I, I've explained in my answer uh, the authority required, the hourly checks, mm -hmm. And often these are instant uh, decisions. And so the police are doing what they can using social media, letting key stakeholders know. I think it, it is unreasonable to expect the police to let every ward council across London know when there's a Section 60. And I'm not sure that's what's been suggested. Um, no, no. I mean, we, we, we're out of time, I'm afraid. Um